Hi, everybody. It's Jay, and I am back in the booth with another sneak peek video preview for this week's new release here on Say With Jay. This week, our new release is A Cowboy's Heart of Gold. It's the fourth book in Jesse Gusman's Sweetview Ranch Western Cowboy Romance series. And I've got some thoughts about the book and a preview for you in just a bit. But first, as Jessie has been doing, she has included a recipe within the scope of this story, and we thought it would be fun to make it for you here. So it's time for another segment we like to call Cooking with Jay. Now, this week may be one of the simplest recipes that I've ever done, but simple does not mean that it is not delicious. Today, we're making grilled eggplant. And it's kind of a bonus because grilled eggplant's not that hard to tell you how to do. We're going to make not one, but two sauces to go with it. And personally, I like to eat my grilled eggplant with both sauces on it at the same time. But as always, don't worry about trying to capture the recipe or the ingredients in real time. I'll have it pasted in the description of this video down below. You may have to hit see more, show all, whatever your device says. But without any further ado, let's get started making some grilled eggplant. Okay, let's take a look at our ingredients. As you can see here, there are not a lot of them, even considering that we're grilling the eggplant and making two different sauces. For the eggplant itself, you're going to need, of course, an eggplant. This one is admittedly a little scrawny. They're not really in season here, but this one will certainly do. You're going to need some olive oil and some salt. For the first sauce, which is an olive oil and paprika sauce, you're going to need two tablespoons of olive oil, a teaspoon of paprika, a half teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, which I forgot to show here, the juice of half a lemon, and a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. You're going to need two to three cloves of garlic, and then about a tablespoon of white vinegar. Our second sauce is a tahini sauce. Tahini, if you're not familiar, is ground sesame seeds. It's a condiment that's Arabic in origin, but it's uh, very commonly used in the Middle East, in the Mediterranean, and in the Far East. You should be able to find it in the international food aisle of your grocery store if it's not in the regular, you know, the general section. But you're going to need two to three tablespoons of tahini paste, two to three tablespoons of water, equal to the amount of tahini paste that you're going to use, the juice of half a lemon and possibly more to thin the sauce, half a teaspoon of salt plus more salt added to taste, and then two to three cloves of garlic. One bonus little tip I did not learn until not very long ago, well into my journey learning how to cook. I've always kind of shied away from using fresh garlic for things because it was so stinking hard to peel, just so inconvenient. Well, I saw somebody do this method and it really works well. All you do is take your unpeeled clove of garlic, lay it down on a cutting board flat surface, put the flat side of a knife on it, and just give it a little smack. You're not trying to pulverize it, so you don't have to, you know, smash it, but, you know, just give it a little, little love tap. And it somehow magically makes that skin just come right off. So now, moving on. First thing you want to do is slice up your eggplant. You want to cut your slices between a third and a half an inch thick. Once that's done, take a baking sheet with a kitchen towel, a clean kitchen towel, and lay your slices of eggplant on top. Next, generously salt all of the slices. 
on both sides. So salt the tops, pat it in with your hand if you like, then flip them and salt the other side. What this will do is pull some of the excess moisture out of the eggplant, and we're going to let this sit for 30 minutes. Now, while this is sitting, we're going to go ahead and make our sauces. First, let's start with the olive oil and paprika sauce. In a small bowl, you want to add about two tablespoons of olive oil. Add your black pepper. Then your half teaspoon of salt. And remember, even though I'm using pink Himalayan salt here, any salt will do. Scientists agree that pink Himalayan salt is only better at being pink. Next, we're going to add our half a teaspoon of garlic powder and our teaspoon of paprika. Then you want to take a microplane or zester and grate two or three of your garlic cloves right into the sauce. Then you're going to add your tablespoon of white vinegar and whisk that up. This is a great example, by the way, of why you should always taste your sauces as you go along, because I completely forgot to add in the juice from half a lemon. And that will finish up the olive oil and paprika sauce. So now it's time to make the tahini sauce. So again, in another small bowl, you want to add two to three tablespoons of tahini paste, and then add an equal amount of water. So you add two tablespoons of paste, use two tablespoons of water. You're going to whisk that up, mix it up really well, but if you've never worked with tahini before, it's kind of weird. When you first start mixing it up, it looks like it's curdled, but keep on mixing it up and then bam, magically it's this wonderfully smooth sauce. Once you get it mixed, you're going to add the juice of the other half of the lemon. If the sauce still seems a bit thicker than you would like, add more lemon juice to thin it. You're going to add your half a teaspoon of salt to start with, and then you're going to grate in two to three more cloves of garlic. Give it a mix, give it a taste, and if you think it needs a little more salt, feel free to add that now. All right, now we're going to jump ahead. It's been 30 minutes. I wanted to give you guys a look. Hopefully you can see this, how much water that this salt has pulled out of these slices. So what you're going to do is take a paper towel or maybe towels and pat these dry on the top. There's no need to do it on the bottom because that's what the towel has been doing, wicking away the moisture as it goes. Now it's time to coat these guys with some olive oil. Just put some olive oil in a bowl and brush it on with a pastry brush. You do want to do this on both sides. By the way, before you start, go ahead and either fire up your grill or your grill pan or griddle or whatever you're using to a medium high heat. On my stovetop, if I'm doing them inside, that's what I, I use is medium high. You want to brush both sides liberally with the olive oil. Because they've been dehydrated, they'll kind of suck it up like a sponge. Once you've got the slices coated and your cooking surface is heated well, and do let it go ahead and get really hot, then you're just going to add your slices on top. You're going to flip them every three to five minutes, and it will take some time. For me, in this setup that you're watching now, it takes 15 to 20 minutes. So just to give you an idea. But what you're shooting for is for them to be very brown on both sides. They may even look a little charred, and that's okay. They are not burnt. Trust me, uh, they do not taste burnt but you're gonna to want to cook them until they are very brown and the eggplant just starts to become soft in the center. These will not crisp up like you fried them, but you'll see, especially the slices that have more seeds, uh, will tend to get a little mushy in the center faster. When you're flipping them and the center's starting to come apart a little bit, you know you're 
practically there. Just as soon as they are as browned as you would like, pull them off and put them on a plate. And that's it. You're done. Now it's time to serve them. Simply plate them up and then drizzle the sauces over them as you like. Sorry about the view of my big old hand here. As I mentioned, I actually liked to have them with both sauces at once, but as you prefer, of course. And there you have it. Grilled eggplant with olive oil and paprika sauce and tahini sauce. And folks, there you go. It is really simple. It is really delicious. I hope you'll give it a try. And if you do, please let us know how it goes down in the comments. Okay, let's talk for a bit about a cowboy's heart of gold. I have to say, I think Jesse has stumbled onto a magic ingredient for a successful book. That is, of course, piglets. Hear me out. I mean, think about it. Throughout the history of literature, famous books that have included pigs and piglets. You've got Three Little Pigs, classic fairy tale, uh, Charlotte's Web. You know, Wilbur was one of the main characters. George Orwell's Animal Farm, which, okay, granted, the pigs were awful and that was not exactly a happy story, but pigs, that's my point. And this story starts out with pigs. The story's not about pigs, though. It's the story of Bo Hansen and Claudia Clyborne. Bo is a second generation hero for us in these books. You may remember his father, Ford, uh, was one of the heroes in one of the original Sweetwater stories. But now Bo is a grown man, and he has a very interesting relationship with Claudia, Claudia Clyborne, who is part of the Clyborne family that has moved from Wyoming to Sweetwater and has bought the Sweet View Ranch. Oddly, both of them are regarded as very sweet, very uh, upright, very people full of character and integrity among everybody in town, anybody that knows them. But for whatever reason, their personalities just clash, and they are like oil and water. You may know people like that. You may be a person like that with somebody else. But there occurs an incident at the beginning of the book involving piglets that marks a change in all of that. Now, I don't want to spoil any more of the story, but here is the opening scene involving piglets of A Cowboy's Heart of Gold. Hope you'll listen to it, hope you enjoy it, and then come back this Friday for the full release here on Say With Jay. Her piglets were out. Claudia Clyborne blinked in disbelief from the driver's seat of the old farm truck she had been driving down the main street of Sweetwater, North Dakota. How had that happened? Maybe they weren't her piglets. But a glance in the side mirror confirmed that the end gate of her trailer swung wide open. Great. How was she going to round them up? I guess we're going to be chasing piglets for a little bit, she said, trying to keep the frustration out of her voice as she looked over at her dog, Ginger, who lay on the seat, and spoke to Mina, the young girl who was staying with her for the summer. Claudia's friend, Olivia, from when she lived in Wyoming, was going through a hard time with her husband, and her mother had just been diagnosed with cancer. Olivia had been beside herself, trying to figure out how she was going to handle everything and also take care of her daughter who had just gotten out of school for summer break. The last time Claudia had talked to her, Claudia had volunteered to let Mina come to the Sweetview Ranch for the summer. Mina had been excited, 
and Olivia had jumped on the opportunity to send her daughter to someone she trusted and knew would take good care of her. Olivia had just dropped Mina off the day before, and Claudia and Mina's first outing together was today to pick up piglets and bring them back to the Sweet View Ranch. They would make a great addition to their dude ranch for the summer, plus they'd be food for the winter. Not that Claudia liked thinking that way, but it was a fact of life on the ranch. Anyway, it was an inauspicious start. Awesome, Mina said, jerking her door handle and hopping out. At least Claudia couldn't complain that the girl wasn't eager to help. She actually really liked Mina. She was a sweet girl and had a great attitude. Olivia had done a good job with her, although Claudia supposed that Mina had some things she was hiding. Nothing serious, just her parents were going through a difficult time, which was always hard on children. So far, Mina hadn't said anything about it, but in Claudia's experience, kids processed those things deeply, and they came out at the oddest times. Yanking on the old latch that stuck more than it didn't, she jumped out of the truck, waiting for Ginger, who moved rather slowly in her old age, to clamber out behind her. Someday soon, Ginger wasn't going to wake up. Claudia didn't want to think about it, since Ginger had been a part of her life for more than half of it. She had ancestors who were herding animals, but her pedigree was so mixed, it was difficult to tell what breed she was. She was at least 18 years old and rarely did anything besides walk outside to use the restroom twice a day. But she loved car rides, and when she had seen Claudia leaving this morning with Mina, her sad old eyes had begged Claudia to take her with her, and Claudia couldn't say no to the dog who had been her best friend in the world for so long. Now, as she waited for Ginger to make her way out of the truck, she tried to figure out how in the world she was going to round up eight piglets. They seemed to be running all over the place. I guess we'll just try to sneak up on them and grab them, she said to Mina, who had come around the truck and waited for instructions. All right. Mina started out, then she stopped and turned around. She was skinny, a typical 12-year-old who hadn't started to fill out all legs and arms and elbows and knees, with a big smile that shone with all the metal in her mouth. Olivia had warned Claudia when she dropped her off that Mina would need to go for several orthodontist appointments over the summer. That meant a long eight-hour drive back to Wyoming, but Claudia didn't mind. If her friend needed help, she would do her best. Of course, they were busy on the ranch, and Claudia was trying to start an orchestra in Sweetwater. Maybe not an orchestra. She would be happy with just a chamber ensemble. But she hadn't realized how expensive sheet music was, and she had spent a lot of long evenings applying for funding. Hi, this is Jay, and thanks for listening. If you're ready for another great audiobook, here's one we think you might like. Or check out the playlist with all our latest releases. Don't forget to subscribe to Say With Jay, give this video a thumbs up, and tell us what you liked in the comments.